It's easy to see the world in black and white. And you see that. You can. Through an x-ray scan of the lungs. I mean, it's intense. Black shows air. That's good. That white shows infection. Looking at the x-rays and just seeing how everything's still white. And with an infection like this, death is all but certain. There were definitely days that we said, he's not going to make it. Intensive care during the pandemic required extraordinary measures, measures that took an extraordinary toll. If we can't fix everything, we can be there for you at the end. In two years, Dr. Luciano Lemo saw more death. It's tough. More death than he might ever care to recount. And yet, on these awful scans, he also saw a chance. This is a Hail Mary, and we hope it'll work. We just. We're blindfolded and we're stepping into the unknown. Into the unknown. Whole different level. With a mission. 24-7. And team. Multiple people. Unlike any other. It's a lot. You gotta be quick and it's a lot of days. Unfortunately, yes. Just keep going, we stick with it. You're talking to the most amazing team on this planet. ECMO, or ECMO. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. For somebody that's never seen it before, for sure, it's intimidating. Intimidating because this machine pumps blood in and out of the body of a person immobilized and in a coma. It does what the lungs can no longer do. It feeds the blood oxygen. I don't know that we, at the beginning of the pandemic, recognized the number of patients that would need that amount of support. Nate McWilliams' body's response to COVID triggered an attack that rendered his lungs useless. We put this uh, big hose, it's a big, uh, looks like a garden hose about yay long and goes up and close to the heart. Here at Swedish, they'd used ECMO before the pandemic for an hour or maybe a day or two, but not like this, not for this long. How long are people on ECMO? It could range from days to months. Months? Yes. And that was, you know, part of the learning process for everybody of giving that opportunity for the lungs to have time to heal and recover. It is as labor intensive as any treatment you will ever find. Constant care, constant worry. And two months in, the team still saw very little black and too much white. And then we're, you know, week eight in and like we still haven't seen much progress. Sometimes you'd see them getting better and getting better over a couple days. And all of a sudden they go downhill really quickly. ECMO is it. If it fails, patients die. And many did, far too many. Sometimes that's pretty tough. And yet for every loss. So it can be done. It's really touching. <laughs> there was a story like this. You know what? This is the last day, like they're not coming back. And then the next day, you know what? A little bit, a little bit of improvement. Somebody saw something that was just enough to make everybody keep going a little bit more and a little longer. And I mean, thank goodness we did. In a black and white world, Nate McWilliams should be dead. And yet earlier this year, the man who spent three months in a coma connected to a machine that replaced his lungs returned. Very fortunate, very fortunate. To the very same ICU floor staffed by the very same people. I'm so happy to see you. Who spent those three months Can I give you a hug? trying to convince themselves they could save his life. And I feel good. I feel real good to see everyone. I'm glad everyone's still here, too. <laughs> Doctors. That's the important thing. Nurses. Techs. Hey, how are you doing? Yes. How are you doing? A lot will be said about a pandemic that robbed us of so many, and so it would be foolish. Oh, your respiratory therapy is To not include at least a few words on the few who depended on the many to survive it. Everybody stood by my side, and that was. Nate McWilliams is here because a floor of people saw this and decided maybe, just maybe, if they waited and waited and waited, the doubt they all felt would be replaced with the kind of moment they all needed to finally, finally catch their breath.
is something that you know I never thought scientifically would be possible. Like you just, it's it's a miracle. It's a it's a scientific miracle happening in front of your eyes. It's really. Thank you. She makes sure I'm okay. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm all right. In Swedish Medical Center, there were a total of 12 ECMO patients. Half of them survived. Cannot stress how labor-intensive this is. Two nurses must watch the patient and the vitals 24-7. As for Nate, just checked in on him this morning. He's really starting to feel better and is looking forward to getting going with the rest of his life. That team gave him that opportunity. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. And you think the number of days where there were decision points about, you know, how much longer. And they were calling doctors around the country. How much longer do I need to wait? Do I need to wait another week? And they'd say, hold, the doctors around the country would say, hold on, give it a few more weeks, see what happens. And that would be the turning point and be like, all of a sudden in week, week eight or week 12, something would change mm -hmm. and that patient would start to heal again. And that's why I called it a miracle. And the meticulousness of that team. My dad's been uh, seven weeks at Swedish in the ICU after having COVID and just the care that he got there. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, Can't amazing describe it. it's amazing yeah. how the efforts of these teams to work as hard as they did in the middle of the most difficult circumstances. Day after day. Chris, thank you. You bet.